Hello. Thanks so much for coming to the picnic. No worries. It's a it's, it's a, a typical Scottish picnic. <laughs> it's overcast. <laughs> it's a genuine thrill. And there's surly people drinking wine nearby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is complete. You've got you're complete with energy drink. I'm all good. You've you have introduced me to these mangoes, Pakistani honey mangoes, which are going to. You're worried my about life. saying it, weren't you? <laughs> You're so t- middle class. You were worried it was racist. <laughs> you were worried if they're called Pakistani honey mangoes. You can go in there and say these are Pakistani honey mangoes. Yeah, mangoes. Yes, and they'll go. Ah, this guy knows. <laughs> this guy's in. I genuinely forgot the name of them. Yeah, honestly. No, you didn't. You were frightened. <laughs> Who was it? Will Smith used to do that great gag. When the Spice Girls were out and go, which one is your favourite Spice Girl? And uh, everyone would go, uh, the, the one with the frizzy hair. And he goes, see, you're so middle class, you refuse to say black. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great It's great you can be here. Uh, you're all Thank here you. doing two shows yes. this year. Yeah. You're, now, the first show interests me slightly. Uh, Brendan Burns hasn't heard, heard of, of you either. either. But when I was looking up the show to see what it was about... It was completely blank. Nothing. So you know what that means. <laughs> you know what that means. Well, I, I we won't divulge here what it means, but you know what that means. <laughs> I could have a guess. And I tell you in the first five minutes that I know you know. <laughs> so, uh, yes, it's a, a sequel to a show I did years ago called So I Suppose. This is offensive now. But I'm keeping my cards very close to my chest. Okay, intentionally. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But it's basically about... It's a shorthand version, five reasons why you've never heard of me and how the hell do I make a living mm-hmm. while remaining anonymous because I'm not sure I want to be famous. Okay. And then, uh, so we, uh, I'm telling you more than anyone I've told anyone, actually. But uh, we also uh, address disability because I was diagnosed as partial hearing uh-huh. only earlier this year. And this was... Turns out I've been disabled since the age of five. <laughs> <laughs> so you were shocked when you heard? mm well, I was shocked when I could hear. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, shocked to discover, yeah, I'm missing 36 decibels in each year. Mm-hmm. And much to my chagrin, no one in my industry was surprised. I was inundated with messages on Facebook. Not, sorry, I thought you were an arrogant cunt. Sorry, I thought you weren't listening. No, it was everyone saying, oh no, now you really know how badly you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a little hearing aids that you've got mm-hmm. in. Okay, they're quite nifty. They're not sort of. They are. I think there's a bubble in my ear right now, so I'm struggling quite a bit. They're mm-hmm. doing something funny. Oh, that's why. Oh, for God's sake, that's disgusting. <laughs> as the audiologist said as well, he goes, Brendan, your ear is a disgusting place, and you should never go in there. <laughs> um, oh, that's so gross. Oh, that's so gross. You see, can you see that? Yeah. I there's can a see massive that. bit of wax stuck in the receiver. <laughs> Oh, that's so gross. <laughs> no wonder it's feeding back. <laughs> when they're not working properly, everything gets a bit echoey. And your second show is over at the stand. Uh, yeah, they're both at the stand. Oh, they're both at stand the stand. Stand one and two. Mm-hmm. So I just have to go. So I have my day job, and then I go upstairs and do my labour of love, which is myself and Colt Cabana, who's a massive, massive star on the independent wrestling scene. Uh, sit in a 50-seater around midnight and provide the commentary to bad wrestling matches. <laughs> And uh, it's fun. It's so funny that people are still going. So what's the show? <laughs> it's the most literal show on the fringe, <laughs> and you're still baffled. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and we have a special guest each night, and we sit there and we watch bad wrestling, and we provide the commentary. And and you're saying that's the labour of love. That's the thing you really yeah, look forward it's to. It's great yeah. fun. <laughs> I last night he, Colt had a friend of his write a theme tune to our song, which is Colt Cabana, no, Brendan Burns and Colt Cabana sit in a 50 seat around midnight and provide the commentary to bad wrestling matches, and at first I really bugged me, now it's stuck in my head, and now actually when I go to do my show and that song doesn't play, I'm a little disappointed, <laughs> I'm like, oh, day job. <laughs> But it's something it's something that you couldn't really do anywhere else, in a way. Oh, Absolutely not. We had people tweeting us going, are you bringing the show to Far- Norwich? I'm like, fuck no. Get on a train. Is there's a reason it's the Edinburgh Festival. No, absolutely. It's because it's the only way I could convince a guy that normally gets two grand a show, because he's a massive comedy fan, you know, that's the only time I could get this guy here. 
So it, it was an idea that you had. I mean, it seems quite niche, but was it something that just was completely it's packed natural? Packed every night. <laughs> packed. No, but in terms of you coming up an with the unreviewable. idea, unreviewable. <laughs> we had a reviewer in one night, and I've almost felt tempted to say to him, "Look, don't feel self-conscious. We know what we are. We know we're going to get slated. We're still going to be full." And it's still going to be very specifically for people who like comedy and wrestling. <laughs> it's a Venn diagram. It's a tiny group of people. It's a lounge room show. Mm-hmm. It is just, you know, like hanging out in a lounge room, watching your favourite pursuit. <laughs> so that kind of feeling that you can do whatever you want here, yeah. is that the thing that's going to bring you back every year, do you think? or Now, now that I've had, you know, this idea, I think um, next year, Dave Callan said he's a massive computer game fan. And I think it might be quite a good idea for us to do an Xbox night and have that as our late night show. Every night? Yeah, every night. It's just us and two other comics play a game of Xbox and talk shit. <laughs> people that, will come to that. People would, yeah. No, you, know, you don't charge too much for it. You have a cheap show. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, there's, if you find an interest, because it's like there's a, lo- there's a lot of big names on the fringe that are, you know, that are that are closet wrestling fans Mm -hmm. and everyone is lining up to do the show (laughs) no one wants money they just want to can I come and play and it's like absolutely absolutely do you think there should be more stuff on the fringe do you think it's become more (coughs) too corporate Uh, we have that argument every year kind of thing but the fact of the matter is look shit face Shakespeare where else is that going to happen you know and they're bound to get bad reviews but every bad review is going to make them more money Yeah, yeah, because it's you can't stop people who hear shit face shakes, who hear the premise, one of the actors is drunk and you never know who. You can't stop people who want to see that from seeing it. Mm. Mm. You know what I mean? It's always going to be there. Yeah. In terms of, it might move where it is, it might not be in the big four. I have to tell you what Colt said last night. Yeah. Because they got a bad review today. And the reviewer was like, <laughs> and you're like, you're making fun of someone with their pants down. <laughs> You're trying to be snide and condescending about someone who already has their pants down and their cock flapping about in the air. And you're going, oh, look at you, silly man with your pants off and your cock flapping. Yeah, I did it. <laughs> you know, you're an idiot. Um, and, but it was so funny. Colt, <laughs> Colt, Colt. Uh, it's so funny as well. He's got a pleasant pass and all the security keep checking him and presuming he's nicked it and he's there going I saw four people going between before me and I went dude you're a jock no one on this fringe looks like you you're the only person that I've ever lived with that said the cliche I'm going to go to the gym every day and I'm going to see five shows a day and I'm like sure you are he's the only guy I've ever lived with that actually lived up to that promise you know I said you don't look like someone with a pleasant pass you know I said in this world so put it this way in this world I'm the jock. And he goes, you? And I went, I know. He's like, in my world, you're the fruity flouncing fag. <laughs> you know, with the, the floppy arms and shit. And I'm like, hey, I'm one of the few people that work out. Everyone thinks I'm a bully. <laughs> Just because so of my accent. Is, is this, so the spirit of the fringe, the true spirit of the fringe, you think is going to um, transcend everything else that's the, the important thing is a bigger beast than that is never under threat here's what happens every year some corporation or some level of sponsorship tries to get involved with the fringe someone gets offended and outraged by some move to make it more corporate and something beautiful and silly and so fringish happens and the fact of the matter is in this massive microcosm the yin, and y- the yin and yin yang help each other so much. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, was it last year Stuart Lee was upset about the Fosters? Yeah. Uh, a couple of years, I think. It was a couple of yeah. years ago, the Fosters, best comics ever, and they had McIntyre on, and he'd never been nominated. And he was like, this is outrageous, trying to list the best. And he asked everyone to nominate the Frank... The Frank Chickens, yeah. Frank Chickens Review. And they came second. <laughs> they came second, because everyone has such a spirit of fun. And they ended up flying out here, doing a gig, and killed it. Killed it. Now, that wouldn't have happened without the corporate input and then the consequent, the subsequent backlash. You know, that beautiful moment would not have happened. It's a, as a casual observer, I see it happen every year, 
and it's you know the, the fringe is never under threat because the fact of the matter is it's an all covers fringe you can't stop people from coming here you can't stop people from putting shows on here mm-hmm. well that was the thing a while back weren't they saying well the fringe might not happen because Edinburgh was going through some they were losing money and they were saying well the fringe might be under threat bullshit and everyone was like well it will happen regardless yeah it's something bullshit we- it used to be way more broke <laughs> You know, they sell more tickets every year. When I was starting out, the average audience number was three. Mm-hmm. Now it's eight or ten, I think. You know, you hear people on their first fringe and they're saying that, you know, they really struggle because they only had 15 people in. At your first fringe, that's a massive, mm. massive number mm. Mm. compared to what it used to be. Are you kidding me? Nah. <laughs> I won't hear of it. <laughs> so you, you feel it's actually get, it's getting better every year? It's... Uh, no, it's just, it's strong. Mm-hmm. It's as a notion, as mm-hmm. a preposterous notion. Yeah. Uh, people descend upon this, you know, and there's so many, there's such a massive audience here to be gained. You know, you only need the tiniest piece of the pie and you'll be all right. Admittedly, the venues, a lot of the venues take the piss a bit <laughs> with the, uh, but I'm at the stand. But I probably shouldn't burn a bridge. <laughs> I never know where I might want to go next. It's been a pleasure, Brendan. Oh, we done. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. That Enjoy was... your Pakistani honey mango. I will. Say it. What's it called? Sunny honey mango. No, Pakistani. Pak- Pakistani. Honey, honey mango. <laughs> Sunny honey mango. He can't bring himself to say Pakistani. I can say Pakistani. You can. I know you can. Yeah. You can. It's not racist it. to call people what they are. No, it's not. It's not. But you, but you have put that in my mouth as something that I'm shy of saying. But yes. I'm not shy of saying you sh- it. You shouldn't be. But I'm not. It's, it's presuming to but be Pakistani you, is an insult. But do you think that's racist? <laughs> that dilemma is racist. But you assume. But you assume that I am shy of saying it. But I don't think I'm shy of saying it. You you had trouble getting it out. <laughs> you did. It took three goes. Did it? Did it? Did it or did it not? It took three goes, didn't it? Yeah, three goes. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Do you want a biscuit? Uh, I had one while we were talking. Oh, I, you must have not noticed. That's how sly I am. <laughs>